So I may be getting, you look at any kind of the contracts, it'll say 50% is being paid from the school and 50% in bonuses is paid by. Oh. Mm. So when you say you work for the school, you may do in NIL for the school. Cool. But you don't do it for athletics. And you may do it for athletics, but you may only do it for football. So it comp- it's, 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 it's like compartmentalized, but at the end of the day, a staffer cannot negotiate or be involved in your, in your NIL deals. Can they say, hey, go talk to that collective? Yes. Mm. But can they go and talk to Pizza Hut and say, hey, I want to make sure we get that? That's illegal. Mm. They can say, hey, go talk to them. They got the money for you. And then whatever happens over there, that's that's on y'all. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball uh, with Jonathan Jones. This is a Speak Your Success media production. And man, we're, we're, we're in the studio. This is the first time we're in the studio uh, like this. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited just to have the opportunity to be, to be kicking it with my brother here, Mr. Reggie Calhoun Jr. He is, he's the visionary behind RPA College. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And not, not, not only that, but he's, he's a big thinker. Uh, I've, I've, I've seen his stuff. He, he's an innovative leader. He, he, he still operates in the mind of an athlete, but at the highest level. And I mean that with all due respect. But man, what, welcome, welcome to the Beyond the Ball podcast, brother. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. So how 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 how, how you how you feeling, man? How, how you feeling right now? Man, I feel good. Um, you know, you you invited me out. I feel privileged to be on the couch, man, with with the Jonathan Speaks. <laughs> yeah, man. We we here. We here. We we outside. You know what I'm saying? We we outside. Um, but man, I want to I want to kick it off, man, and and just. Hey, hey, family, what's going on? Jonathan Jones here. I know you've been enjoying the content. I know you've been watching the episodes. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can get notified about all our new content and all the episodes that we have coming. All right. Did you hit the subscribe button yet? Boom. Just gave you a second. All right. I'll get you back to the episode. I I guess we'll just go here just for the sake of it. Like, and I'm just going to throw out NIL, and, and, and I just want you just to share, share whatever you're thinking. You know that's your camera right there. So if you want to talk directly to the people, you can talk to the people. But when, when, we, when we hear NIL, what, what's, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Just take your time. Take your time. Uh, first, I think it's always start off with confusion, mm. right? Um, everybody thinks NIL is athletes get paid. But if you take it all the way back, it's athletes are allowed to get paid. Mm-hmm. Not everybody gets paid though. For sure. But at the end of the day, you bring it all the way back. It's branding, it's marketing, it's sales, it's athletes doing what they do, influence. Uh-huh. Right? And the NCAA gave this pretty cool term, NIL, but in all reality, it's who you are. Right? Mm-hmm. So for me, I always look at the NIL as it shouldn't be as confusing as it is. Mm-hmm. But it's only that because athletes in college still haven't learned their brand, their voice, what they're good at, what they bring to the market, right? Because they're only used to saying, I want to play and get a scholarship. Well, now you can get paid and you still don't know what you're going to do after that because the marketplace isn't giving you scholarships. Mm-hmm. You got to go and make your lane, right? So it's confusion, Yeah. but I love it. I, I think it's a great opportunity for these guys and girls to like build something for the future. But right now, it's just chaos. And, and what we're four four years in at this point. Uh, three. Okay, so yeah. so we're three three years in, and I mean, I've you know, I like I, I like you get the opportunity to speak to athletes and and you know go to colleges and different things like that and have these conversations. And it's interesting to your point. The majority, when I've asked, I've asked different students and, and I'm like, so what, what do you think? What do you feel about NIL? The majority are either on one of the two sides. One, I don't want nothing to do with it yep. because it's confusing, right? They don't always say that, but that's what it is. I don't know what to do with it. I don't know how to get started. Then the other part is, hmm, I just don't completely understand it. Yeah. I don't know what name I don't know what name image likeness is. So 
I'm just gonna be there, right? Which is which is almost even worse, yeah. right? Because you're just staying in a spot, and and I'm talking about the people typically who are at the Division One universities, right? And these are the people with the best opportunity to get that to get that bag, yeah. And it, I, I, oh. but it but it pulls back another issue: mm-hmm. athletes not knowing how to do something outside of sports. Mm, talk about it. Talk about it. The thing about take nil off pay, payable. That's talking about internship. Uh, NIL is the same as you getting an internship. We're not taught to even get an internship. Mm. So if you don't know what to do outside of the sport, and now you're just saying, yo, you can get paid off your name, image, and likeness, what's my value to, to the marketplace? Or what I want to do? Yeah. So I can't get an internship because I don't really know what I want to intern in. For sure. I can't get a deal because I don't really know what I want to represent. And then the aspect of even though people people in, in collegiate athletics, I mean it's not everybody, but there's a person that's like, we got micro internships. That's not even enough time to get integrated into a system. But once again, going back to your point though, if you don't know what you want to do, if you don't know what your skill set is, you don't even know where to begin. We're not even talking about resumes. We're not even talking about not having time. Yeah. Not even having time. Yeah, okay, you go through the season. Yeah, you get whatever break. But then it, then the question becomes, Are you? do you really want to spend that break working? Or do you want to spend that break relaxing? You know, of course, still getting your workouts in because, you know, you, they're they driven for that. But it opened up a can of worms, it, man. It did. And it, and it opened up a can of worms. And people in media will tell you because it's the wild, wild west. Oh my God! I hate when they say that. They yeah. shell that. <laughs> it ain't the wild wild west. It just pulling back the curtain of what these schools really aren't doing mm. for the athlete. Like, there's no way you sign an 18 year old kid and tell them that they're going to go pro, and then if they go pro, what are they going pro to do? Because you still got to go build your name and likeness to go pro. This is true. So, what are you actually developing them? To go pro, I hate when everybody says, "Yeah, I finally found my place to get developed." In what? Because if you can run the right play and you're already skilled athletically, you're gonna make some plays. You For make sure. some plays, you hit a hot streak, you get drafted. Hmm. But what about the person who actually actually has to develop and work? Is there really a developmental system there? And then what are you developing them in? Uh, so now the NIL really just pulled the curtain back on what the schools and the pro- programs really aren't offering because at, on 33% of athletes major in business. So why don't they know how to run a business? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're kind of like, we're like doing these things that sounds great. It's just like, oh yeah, you know, you're going to stay eligible and you're going to be in business and business management and marketing. And every athlete I've spoken to, I want to go major in business because I want to run a business. And I say, what business? T-shirts. Oh, that is the one. Oh my goodness! Y'all better go to Printify. Oh my goodness. Print pool, all that yeah. Stuff. Oh, but yeah. even with that, if you go get a t-shirt brand, how are you gonna build the brand? You still haven't learned to build a brand. Mm. And and we've seen it on social media. The one, uh, the young lady. This wasn't even this wasn't even athletics related. The young lady had like a million followers, and she couldn't sell. I don't know. It was like a thousand dollars worth of t-shirts. And you've seen, I've seen the story a couple of times. So it's been multiple people because I mean, social media, social media is going to do whatever you tell it to do. So if you tell the people to, Hey, check out the video, click the link in the bio, whatever, there's going to be a certain amount of people that eventually click the link. If you have people coming to the page, but then if you don't even know how to get them, if you don't know how to attract them, get them to stop scrolling. And then if you don't even have a product to offer them, then what are we then what are we talking about? So the NIL for, for me is we have to get past the noise of everybody can now get paid. You now can leverage your NIL. You now have your rights to get whatever. Okay, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Let's get past that. We need to make sure that our people are representing our brand right. So if I'm gonna go to, to a big time FBS school, well. First off, letting to get acclimated to the culture of the school. Mm. And the problem is, most of these programs don't even have a brand. Mm. So they both using each other. 
without the athletes, the schools aren't known. But without the schools, the athletes aren't known. But neither one of them actually have a brand message. Mm. So they both just winging it. Like, hey, you, you know, hey, you, you, you show up, you play, we win championships. Cool. Outside of championships, what are you known for? Mm, that's strong. Cause I, cause I know looking back, you know, I wanted, to, I wanted to go to the Dukes cause they had the Cameron Indoor Stadium and you know, the Tar Heels cause Jordan went there, but you got a point. You got a point. I mean, there, there are very few programs that I can think of that are really focused on, of course, Clemson is one of the cream of the crop in terms of developing athletes. Cause Davo Sweeney has said, I don't even just go out there and just recruit just athletes. Yeah. I, cause I, I've talked with some of the guys. Yeah, three point five, three eight five on the team. I'm like, dang. But what is Clemson known for? What's the school known for? I wish I could tell you. What's the athletics known for? Football. But what is their what is their what is their brand image? What is their what is the Clemson Tigers nil? Mm. They don't have one. But we know Dabo Sweeney is is religious. We know that, yeah. Because he, he's. He puts it out there. Uh -huh. That's why he gets paid the big bucks. Uh -huh. Now, if I say, what is Harvard known for? Mm -hmm. We know for a fact you go to Harvard, it's educational, it's network, oh, yeah. it's Ivy League. It's for sure, yeah. But if you're on a football team, nobody really cares. No, nobody cares. But they know if you go to Harvard, you get to something. But if I go to Clemson, what am I actually getting? Mm. So you got two programs or two businesses, two entities that are that are using each other, but there's no end. So one is trying to get as much money as possible for the next three, three to four years. The other one is saying, okay, these these cycle of athletes that come through, we gotta get the most out of them because we gotta use it for the next cycle. Mm. So I'm gonna recruit you and I'm gonna sell you on, you know, we just had Sunday started going draft last year. But what's what are you selling me? And that's why the NIL, the portal has created the whole issue now. Because now, if my NIL bag is bigger than your NIL bag, you can't sell me on your championships. You can't sell me on your, on your facilities. Mm -hmm. You can't sell. Because now, I'm comparing apples and apples. Facilities, weight room, cool. Facilities, weight room, cool. Now it's money and money. Who got the most money? Mm, it really is what it has become. Oh my! Because what what the quarterback from was it the quarterback supposed to go to Florida or Florida State? And it was like fifteen. Maybe. Oh, yeah. And then it fell through. Boston. What was the deal with that? I don't even know what the deal was. I don't, I, sources say that. The, <laughs> <laughs> sources say that it wasn't even the kids' plan. It was outside people trying to broker this deal. Oh, so that's the so if, if if sources say or sources could say that somebody didn't want to put up some money. Sources, whoever. Source, hey. Sources say, hey, the the contract was signed, but the contract you signed was a contract with the school, not the collector. Oh my goodness! So now we're talking about the regulations and legal and advisement. Oh my goodness! Okay, wow. Okay, let's pivot off that. Yeah. So as as <laughs> keep going, you know, and it gets deeper and deeper. It's like, man, all right, man, what's next? So okay, so 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 now I want I want I want to throw in Coach Prime here because because I know when you know the conversations were talking that were the conversations were happening about NIA, everything was heating up, and of course he's the I mean no pun intended, but he's the prime you know, candidate for NIL, that's like a double pun, you know, the Amazon Prime and Coach Prime, boom, boom, yeah. But he came out and said, uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have players on my team that's making more NIL, like that's making more than me. And I, I, I don't know if you know something about that or not, but then he went and started getting them, well, I don't know if he was getting them deals. No. Oh, he wasn't? I thought he would, I thought, so, okay. Okay, so when, he said that, so you got to remember um, Coach Prime from, from the old school. Mm -hmm. So he initially said what he said from the viewpoint of the old school. Saban did the same thing. And then when you realize, yo, we got to compete, we need the NIL. Let's go get NIL going. But he also said, I want you to focus on the NFL, not the NIL. In layman's terms, 
there's a bigger goal. Don't think about just right now. Uh -huh. Think about later. Uh -huh. That's financial literacy. Mm -hmm. like, do, you, do you want the 50K and you good? Or do you want the 5 million? Mm. But if you only sell them on the NIL right now, they lose focus on the goal later. You mm. can you can still build both, but there's one goal at the end. I want to get here. Let's focus on getting here. This is cool. Yeah. But the goal is there. So are you cool with just winning the first lap or winning the whole mm. race? Huh. And that's what he's saying, right? But everybody's looking at it like, oh, well, he don't want them to get NIL. Not don't want you to get NIL. I don't want you to get blinded by NIL. Because mm. people say you this and really should, should, should be offering you this. Mm. So now, is he getting them deals? A school can't get a kid an NIL deal. True. But that you, you, but you know how they have some, because Colorado is one of them programs where they have, they have, they have people on staff that can connect them to businesses. Not on staff. Collectives. Nah, she on staff. I know, I know, I know a woman in Colorado. What's her job? She's over at NIL. She's over at NIL. Oh, that's so it's total separate? Yes. She's not working for athletics. Oh my so goodness. Oh my so goodness. The, the structure of a college is totally different than anything in the in America, right? You got the school, you got the athletics, and then you have administration for athletics. So a football coach isn't on the same budget as the strength coach. Of course not, yeah. But, it, but it's two different rules. And then the teacher has no involvement with the athletics. That's true. And the budgets aren't even on the same deal. So I got $28 million that I could pay over here, but the teacher's getting six. They used to catch Mm. But coaching them getting 400, 500, 2 million because the budgets are different. So when you say I work for Colorado or I work for Texas or I work for Clemson, you may work for the university, mm. not for the athletics. Because if you look at even the LSU, their athletic department is governed and ran by the uh, Tiger Athletic Fund, TAF. So I may be getting, you look at any con the, the contracts, it'll say 50% is being paid from the school and 50% in bonuses is paid by. Oh. Mm. So when you say you work for the school, you may do N NIL for the school. Cool. But you don't do it for athletics. And you may do it for athletics, but you may only do it for, for football. So it can it's, it's, it's like compartmentalized, but at the end of the day, a staffer cannot negotiate or be involved in your, in your NIL deals. Can they say, hey, go talk to that collective? Yes. Mm. But can they go and talk to Pizza Hut and say, hey, I want to make sure we get that? That's illegal. Mm. But they can say, hey, go talk to them. They got the money for you. And then whatever happens over there, that's that's on y'all. <laughs> <laughs> whatever happens over there, it's on y'all. Oh my goodness! Oh wow. Okay. Okay. So okay. So okay. So let's 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 let's, let's, let's stay in the same. Well, hold on. Wait. Well, I, I'm gonna ask my I'm gonna ask my coach Prime question in a second. But hold on. Wait. I I, I wanted to get to I wanted to get to so the people know like how you're credible to be able to talk about what you're talking about. And you know how do you have the background to understand this this language yeah. and, and all of this? So break that down. Yeah. You know, you know, break break, so, break that down. I'm Reggie Calhoun Jr. Um, I'm a former athlete, um, military guy. Um, I played ball. I broke records. I've been in in and out this NCA space for over a decade. Um, I recruited some of my friends to come play with me and. In college, I read the rule book of the NCAA. I read the rule book of the NJCA. I started a prep school. I understood the the bylaws of the NCAA to work the prep school. Um, I consult with universities. I consult with high schools. Um, we help athletes get to school through recruiting, not a recruiting service, but we actually understand what the the, the bylaws of recruit, so recruiting is. Um, and for the last. Shoot, decade, man. I've just been in, engulfing myself in 
what the NCAA is and what college is. And, and once I understood that, it just became what I fell in love with, right? Mm. And, and as a former athlete, once you get out and you start look, um, looking at the, the rules, you realize a lot of things we didn't take advantage of. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's been my mission to make sure that um, we work with athletes because athletes have a developmental gap in one to four areas. No matter wh- where where they are, they're going to have one. And that's in, that's, that's in the mental, the academic, the physical, or the career. Mm. So we assess those and then we address those gaps. Every athletic department will have a developmental gap in one of the four areas. Either they are missing the mental, they're, they're missing the academic structure, they're missing the physical facilities, or they're missing the career, the transition for the athletes. So across the board, every athlete, person, whatever, will have those gaps, and our job is to find those gaps and develop plans specifically for those. Okay, and you do that through through where? Talk to us. Talk to us. Come on. Come on. Come on, RPA College. Yeah, Come on. So we, we created RPA College about seven years ago. Um, RPA, the initial stand for Recruit, Prepare, Achieve. Um, and then we decided to add a post-grad prep school to it. We have some certifications to get through that. Um, and it started off simply as a football team, and then it grew into a program. And now we bring athletes in, and then we actually bring the program to high schools. Man. Wow, Full you service. you don't you don't hear people say that often though. You know, I yeah. mean, you, I mean, you, you hear people you hear talking about talks about you know the 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 older colleges and the how long they've been standing and all this, but you don't you don't hear brother roll up in here and say I created a college. Yeah, you know, and 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 I like to educate people on the the process. So creating a college isn't the same today as it was in the eighteen hundreds. Mm. Right. So people always yell out accreditations or this. But but when you understand what a university actually does, you understand that a college is simply a specialized place for, for people to learn. So the College of Business, the College of Nursing, the College of Social, of social, of social, of social Work. So all of those together are considered a university. But standalone is a specialized school for that career path. So we built a college specifically for athletes. Mm. So that's all we work with is athletes. So we trademark the name simply not to become a college, but to offer what a college offers. Mm. Structure, uh, career advancement, education, athletics, because our team plays against the colleges in Texas. So we play against all the JUCO, the TJC, the Cisco, the, the Blends, the the Navarro. So we play against those teams simply to give our guys the exposure and the experience in a college setting so that if they do decide to go to college, then they already know what it's like. So we're a prep school, but we coined the term simply to educate people on college is not what y'all think it is. Mm. Like college is just a place to go learn. And you can be accredited nationally, regionally, uh, religiously. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's so many different levels, but we're focused on one thing, right? And then, then of course, for the traditional folks who want it, we partner with people who provide the traditional classes. So if you want traditional, you know, learning, we could facilitate that and get you there. But ain't that what Clemson Tigers do? Clemson Tigers don't teach you nothing academically. They funnel you to the Clemson. So you are you play for the Tigers. Mm. You go to school at Clemson though. Mm. Wow. Okay. And if you go to work, you work for AT and T. They have a partnership with the university for development, or employees can go to school for free over oh. here or whatever. It's it's a system. It's a relationship. So when we pull it all back and stop acting crazy <laughs> and just understand that, dude, if you worked for AT&T or Tyson's or whoever, and, and, and they said, hey, you work here, but we have a relationship with the school over here. You go to school and you mention the fact that you work here, they'll give you a discount. We did, we did, we did the exact same thing. Uh-huh. So we built that ecosystem to say, hey, you 
you can come here, play for us, work out with us, train for us, represent our brand, but academically, go over here. See what I mean? I get you. That makes it make so much sense. And yeah, there are so <laughs> many, and th there are so many jobs uh, in different places like that. I'm just going with that example that you use that that do are uh, they're able to give additional benefits because they can speak to that. Oh, we'll give you tuition reimbursement or you know all that good stuff. So yeah, that's, that's a good selling point. I never even thought about it like that because I, I don't know if you know. I went so part of my story is I, I, I went JUCO. I started out going JUCO at Richland. Uh, at, at Richland before they changed the names and got all wonky with the Dallas College and stuff. But yeah, went, went, went Juco to Richland and then went to UT Tyler. So yeah. at Louisiana College, y'all yeah. was, was in our conference. And that's, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, right. so answer this, right? So in your simplest de definition, what's a Juco? Uh, my simplest definition, I, I, I consider a Juco to be just a foundational step to prepare you for the four-year institution. You play sports? Mm hmm So you went to the JUCO mm -hmm. and play sports. What happens if you go to a foundational school that, that doesn't have sports? Is, is that JUCO? It should still be. It should still be, right? Yeah, it should so still be. Nobody calls a community college without sports a JUCO. They just call it community college. So that lets you know that a JUCO is a community college with a sports team. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my goodness! It, it's simple. It's, it's simple. It is it's simple. Yeah. Without the sports team, it's not a JUCO. But at the core of it, whether you're at JUCO or not, it's a community college. This is true. This is true. I'm with you. So what? So so what's the so what's the big goal for you with? With, with with RPA, like what's the what, what what like what's the big goal that that, that you're striving for? Because nobody just says I'm gonna create a college, and then you know there's not something that that, that that's behind it. What what like what is that? So basically, man, so we we want to take the system and put it into programs that technically don't have that, right? So for instance, like a NAIA that's in Dallas Parkway. Mm. The the overhead to launch a football team scares people mm -hmm. but if i can give you the infrastructure and then run a club team through your program it costs you nothing it provides something and it increases your enrollment but it costs you nothing costs nothing it costs you nothing oh my goodness because we've already seen what club teams do they already exist you got little league team aau um mm. so if an AAU program was to partner with a university that doesn't have that specific sport, they just adopt them the name, guess what? This school or this program now has a competitive team that cost them nothing but put their brand out there. Mm. That's a, if, if you say no to that, then that makes you a pretty, a pretty silly person. You're pretty much in a man of box. So that's, but if you peel it back and say, that's, that's what we want to do. But internationally, we want to take the club model, the JUCO model abroad. And we want to give the American athletes an opportunity to go overseas and play and build their brand internationally. So we were talking about NIL mm -hmm. in 2017, where it was like, hey, get your name in your community. Mm -hmm. Because you can build your NIL faster at home than you can in a new area. That's what was said, yeah. But they don't think about it because because it's not taught. So we want to put RPA in any high school in the rural areas, any small town school, any trade school. So imagine a trade school with a football team. Imagine a trade school with a basketball team. Mm. Now we're creating a workforce and still allowing people to play sports. So I believe, you know, sports is a tool. So our saying is the platform of sports. But the program itself is life. For sure. Yeah, and I mean, going, going, going back to one of your favorite words, which I know is retention. Yeah. If you, it, it, statistics have shown, and I, I've seen this just in uh, like the minority male groups and initiatives that, they, that they've started across the country in colleges and junior colleges, community colleges. People are more likely to stick it out when they're a part of an organization, a team, a club. So therefore, 
it helps the institution which wants to retain people so that they can go and show these stats to you know people to get them to contribute and donors and all that other stuff and then get more people like them who more than likely are minorities which we know the percentages are very low on yeah. minorities not not just attending but graduating as a whole and so retention is going to be big for everybody especially in texas right like the uh, state just passed a bill where it's performance-based funding now for a lot of JUCOs. Mm. So now they either have to finish the, pro, the pro, a program and enter a, a career or transition to a four-year school. What happens in JUCO with athletics? Most of them boys wash out. That is true. I've seen so some talented if, dudes. So if you don't have a plan for them when they enter, you're risking losing funding. So you're going to have some schools that want to say, look, we can't lose funding. So we're going to either say we need to have a plan or we're not going to recruit kids from certain areas. Mm. And then that's when you start seeing. Oh, yeah. So that's why we, we want to get to the high school. So us doing that, everything in our silo was good for seven years. But now it's like, OK, we got to give it to everybody, because if not, the portal, the JUCO rules, everything gets pushed on to the high school and the high schools aren't preparing them for college in I mean, anyway, because they have their own system from 12th grade back. The colleges have everything from the time you enter forward. Where is the middle? Oh, my goodness. Wow. That is true, because it is a gap. Cause once you get on campus, and, and and we're not even talking about what they call the what the, the Hampton runaround, or whatever they call it, uh, or the Howard runaround. It's one of the two where they send you over here, and they send you over here, and they send you over here. But when you get on the college campus, yeah, the, you, that's why they have those freshman courses now, because... You don't know what you don't know, especially if your parents been waking you up this whole time and your parents giving you lunch money and whatever it might be. So, yikes. It's a shift that's happening, and but, but they're throwing too many things to the pot. Like, in a portal. Uh, it's like, dang, dog, like, slow down. Like, dang, I, that is I, a lot, Can though. I catch this first thing first? Like, how do I even get eligible? Oh, okay, no more test scores. Okay, so now no more test scores. So now all I need is a 2.3 to get into the NCAA, a 2.0 to get in the NAIA. Well, shoot, that means almost everybody gets to get in now. So how do I make myself more appealing than this person? I got to get admitted as a student. Mm -hmm. Well, if I was never taught to apply to a school, I, I was only taught to hope to get an offer. So mm. if I'm not getting offered, I'm not, 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 not applying to schools. So when do I actually get accepted? Mm. So it's like we created RPA because I keep hearing the same thing over and over. If I don't go D1, I'm not going to school. Well, do you realize there's not just D1 schools? And do you realize there's a other opportunity in the NAI? Because NAI isn't the NCAA. NJCAA isn't the CCCAA. So you got all these schools out here that you could choose from, but you're only being sold on one deal. NAIA had N NIL in 2020. Mm -hmm. With the with the volleyball player was one of the first. So, mm -hmm. but everybody's highlighting N NIL and the NCAA. Uh -huh. But the NAIA been had NIL. But NAIA players and athletes and employees they're like, oh, because we're not a big name school, we ain't gonna touch it. So now I'm saying it ain't if it comes to your door, door doorstep, it's when. Mm. What you gonna do when a when a kid says, hey coach, can y'all help me get an NIL? And you have nothing in place. Retention is gone. Mm. So now we, you know, we circling the wagon. We just we just doing this thing. Like, like we're just doing this thing where you come in, we're going to get you to graduate in four years. And then what? What resources do you have for alum? We got a big problem in the education space. It's a, I, mean, it's, I mean, it's a major problem. And I mean, I've, I've talked with student athlete development people just across the country. A couple of years ago, I probably did. I probably found almost everyone you can imagine. I probably had 150 calls with these people. And then I had them take a survey and I'm like, what do you think these athletes need? And the majority of them said financial education. They said something about mental health. 
and this was this was before NIL. And then they might have said something about career. But I look up and it's like they're all majority, majority, mm-hmm. are following this blueprint. They're gonna give you the etiquette dinner. I asked one of them, I was like, why do they do the etiquette dinner? And I'm and then somebody was like, some of them really need it. And I was like, but I don't know if you need an etiquette dinner over something that's like preparing you for like career transition type deal. And then you're throwing in NIL and all this other stuff. It's like some of this stuff, y'all, some of this stuff is definitely for checking a box. And I've had friends tell me that some of this stuff is checking a box. You know what's crazy? A student athlete development person isn't a player development person. That is true. It's two different jobs. That is true. Two different levels of access. That is true. That's a good that's a good point. So your player development guy has to tell his athletes to go see the the student athlete development people because the student athlete development people aren't in the gym, aren't on the field, they in the office. Well, your player development guy is probably a coach. He's probably a coach minded. So he's only talking about getting you better physically. But he knows he needs to develop you, but he's thinking develop you to be better to play on the sport. But he should be sending you over here to get better. If I've done an assessment and know you really don't study well, you really not stay good at math. You really don't comprehend reading really, really, really well. You left high school reading on 11th grade level. But who's, who's taking the time to actually go that deep into an athlete? Because now you're throwing NIL, I'm going to give you 250 to come to my school. You just gave a kid with an 11th grade reading level $250,000 to come play. And then somebody's going to say, well, shoot, he really good. Let's give him 550 and he transfers. And then the NSA say, you know what, man, look, we can't keep losing these lawsuits. Y'all want to transfer, bro? Have at it. Now I'm at this school, I'm at this school, and I'm at this school. And in four years, I've done nothing but look good in different uniforms, and now I'm back at home. Broke. Without a plan. With no degree. Mm. And no relationship to any school. because You're not an alum at any of those schools. And no skill set. And no skill set. And no community. So what are you a far part of? What... What could you say in 10 years, I'm going to go to my reunion? Which one? Dang. You want to know how I know that? I went to four high schools in four years in four different states. So I'm a part of like four classes of 2006. <laughs> <laughs> they all live out. Hey, they pull up like that. So everybody, I'm part of all their class classes, right? But that's high school. So imagine yeah. if I did that in college. My first time ever going to the same school for four years straight was college. Man. And I love my school. I go back every year and meet the new incoming class. I'm, I'm really? Probably one of the only alum who show up every year. Really? Yeah. To LC? Every year. I seen, I seen you as first team. I seen you as first, first team. Yeah. Number two in history. I was a dog. But. I seen the stats. I seen, seen yeah. Nice. Yeah. But what matters most to me is my life began at that school. Um, so I can't look at and I didn't know it was D3 until like my sophomore year um, I didn't understand what D3 or none, none, none of that meant I was like bro this school said that I could come play and I'm in there for sure. so for me I go back out of appreciation yeah. coming out there I don't get to this what would you, what, you graduate with your degree in? exercise science okay are you still putting that to work a little bit somehow? Uh, Knowledge wise, not not practical. Cause you don't coach. No, I'm out of that game. I thought I, I, cause I was looking at that. I was like, wait. So I'm you went and cre- you created the college, but you don't coach at the college. Well, no, the first year I did. Why'd you why why'd you decide not to why'd you decide I'm to make that change? A, I'm, I'm I'm not a sports coach. I'm more cause I will spend more time trying to get you to understand the art behind the position of defensive backs. I don't have mm. time to like coach you on the skills. Look, man, this is how you should look at this game. Understanding the playbook. This is how you learn the playbook without it being confusing. Uh, Do this. Right? So, I'd rather, like, you come in the office 
and then me show you how to learn than the media teach you how to run. Because uh. once, once I get, get you to a full forward, then, then what? But if you get injured and you have any thoughts about sports is over, never going to play again, let me show you how to bounce back. Because I, mm. I was injured before and I had the same thoughts. And this is what I was able to do afterwards. Mm, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a coach. I, 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 I cannot because I'm going to always look at it through the lens of you should be that. Like my, I want you to be, you're in college or you, I have the same, but you're too old for that, for that. So I'm like, it's no way you can't run with opposite arm or opposite leg at 15. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm stressed. I'm like, you cannot. <laughs> Who taught you how to jump? Like, like my, like, yeah, you know what? The trainer's train, <laughs> the coach's coach, and let me develop. Uh, I get you. I cannot. That, I get you. Well, one, I mean, one, one, one thing I have noticed about you is I think you're really, I, I think you're really developed are really well one i think you're really well connected networking wise and to your point if you show up every if you have the consistency to show up at your alum at your uh you know at your institution every year i mean that's a testament of of that fruit but even further than that i mean we've been in that we've been in the same city i don't know how long have you been in dallas 20 years. oh i'm surprised we haven't crossed paths before but i've, I've probably seen you i know i've seen you places i've, I've had right. to have seen you places before but like, what, what what would you what what tips or what tools would you give somebody around? Like, if they're if a student athlete out there, they're trying to figure out, you know, like I'm not comfortable with with who I am, or I'm not comfortable talking about myself. Like, how would you teach somebody in terms of like networking or getting connected and building relationships with people? Um, I, I, my favorite question is, what do you do? Mm -hmm. I always ask that because I'm not the one to go in to talk about myself. So I'll always ask people, so what do you do, man? So what do you do? And they'll tell me what they, so what they do. And they'll say, so what do you do? And I'm just like, oh, this is what I do. And then now you get, they start asking you stuff now. So you don't have to feel like you're selling yourself. Because uh -huh. they're going to say, so what do you do? And, you, and, if, and if, you, if you look at it from when you were playing, nobody had to ask you what you did. They'll just come and say, yo, man, good game. Mm. I saw you did da 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 da. So we, mm. so we, we skipped the step of what you do. So now, because we was never taught that, I teach them go ask them what they do. You now become the fan. Mm. In every room, I'm a fan of everybody. Like I'm like, so what do you do? So where are you from? What do you do? Where are you from? I do that every every room. I'm a fan, even if they book me to come talk. I'm still coming in the room as a fan because <laughs> I've never been in the position to be a fan. People have always been a fan of me. Mm. So I, I practice being a fan. Like, hey, what do you do? Because sometimes somebody will tell you something, you'll be like, whoa, never heard of that before. Yeah. Tell me more about that. Yeah. And now I'm intrigued. And then I'll say, well, look, this is what I do. And now I'm going to lead with value. This is what I do. And I think that we can do this together. Mm. I DM'd you that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how, we, that's how we had the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we hopped on the, we hopped on the call and we connected. And then you end up on the podcast. Yeah, we're here, man. We locked in. And it's, it's, it's that easy. Because you do it in the locker room. Where you, where you from, dog? Oh, I'm from da 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 Word. Me too. <laughs> hey, let's ride home together. <laughs> You already That's real. It. Yeah, you already yeah, yeah. It. Find the people in the room, locker room, business room. Mm. Like, find those people and say, hey, so what you do? So where you from? Hey, how long you been, you know? It's mm. the same concept. You already, you already, you already did it. Just yeah. let go of the whole, it's my brother stuff. Like that, I, do, I die for my brother. Let, <laughs> let kill that part. We gotta stop doing that part. That's crazy, right? Like everybody ain't your brother, but but, but we can build a brotherhood. But don't don't it. lead off. I just met you last week. <laughs> family on three, one, two, three, family. <laughs> Bro, I just met you yesterday. I just transferred in last week, and I'm um, in the family. <laughs> I don't know where you're from. I don't know what you about. I don't know if it's gonna be war. You, you know, you gonna do this? So now. Nah, 
making jokes on that. But nah, man, like the like the same passion you have in, in a locker room when you met the new guy. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing you do out in the streets. But the issue is we were never taught our value outside the uniform. So I can't say this is what I do because you don't see me in my uniform. Mm. That's why the NIL is confusing. Because you're telling me I can't use the school logo, I can't use the school facilities to build my brand. Well, how do I tell people I'm valuable? Mm. And that's why the NCA was winning that lawsuit saying, without the school, y'all wouldn't be where y'all at. And they're saying, well, without us, y'all would be where y'all at. Both of them are right. But only mm. one is restricted on how much money that, that they can make. Mm. So now, take the frictions off. It's still, you, you, you can't say, hi, my name is Reggie. I play for LSU. I'm number one. Blah, blah, blah. Give me a deal. Because they gave you a deal only because you mentioned what school you went to. You never sold them on what you could really do. So we're not taught how to network, which is if you go to school, you should be networking with everybody. Man. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you're right. And then then, then you pull them out of class and put them all online. So now we all online and we in the one building all day. So when do I actually get to meet the people who actually went to the school? So although it sounds great, like, I don't know, UCLA is in going to the Big Ten. They will never be at school. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's, oh, my goodness. So then you technically become a club team. Because mm. you're only going to be with your teammates. Man. So, what's the difference? You ain't going to school. Because you're doing all online classes. So, if I'm going to do online classes at UCLA, play for this team, what's the difference in going to the University of Phoenix and playing for a team? None at all. But we make it so, like, it's weird. Like, we do this thing that it's like, if it ain't ABC, one, two, three, then it's not real. But y'all are doing the exact same thing. You online and you play for a team. You online and you play for a team. What's the difference? Just to create separation. That's it. That's all, that's all it can be. Because even, even to that point, I mean, I like, because going back to when I was at UT Tyler, which was D3, right? D3, now D2. Hey, shout out to them. But, uh, yeah, the, the facilities are nice. Bro, the facility, I'm like, what in the world? This is nice. The gym, nice. I was like, okay. But why is that? Why did a D3 have such nice facilities? It's a, it's a, because it's... They, they part of a system. Oh, that does, okay, that does make, make a lot more sense. So does D3 really matter if I'm part of the UT system? You like, shouldn't. We still got money. Mm. Yeah. So, so what, what, are, what are we talking about? People can buy into D2. They, 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 they can buy into D1. But if the school mm. chooses to keep this program here in D3, the main one, D1, the other one, FCS, the other one, this, and then we also share resources with the HBCU. I think business takes over the education system. Mm. Take the AM Kingsville, Commerce, take the AM Foundation. Some teams, some some schools have teams, some of them don't. Mm. So we just kind of like we just doing this thing. <laughs> Oh man, you said Jackson. Oh man, I don't want to talk about Jackson State. But uh, no, no, I'm just saying because it seems like some people just talk. Because I, I don't have any feeling about Dion leaving Jackson. Mm-hmm. You know, I have no feeling at all because at the end of the day, when and and this is this is this is black conversation, right? This is black. But at the end of the day, we're raised and we're taught that you know that we should be better 
than the people that raised us because we're standing on their shoulders, our ancestors' shoulders, our, you know, all that. So if you're in a position to where you've worked for, you've negotiated, and his, I, I've just heard how his contract is broken down. I think I heard you break down his contract in one of them interviews, and I was like, that's genius. That's, that's, first of all, that's genius how his contract is broken down. But then the aspect is, if he's done all this work, which the work has produced the fruit to give him an opportunity to put his family in a better position, who is going to say no to that? That's the part I don't get. I'm like, how are people mad? Because my man trying to put his family in a better position. Because we don't understand <clears throat> process. The NCA is the NCA. Yeah. Period. The NCA owns all the schools that play. Well, they manage all the schools that play in the NCA. Uh -huh. The Ivy Leagues, the HBCUs, the Power Fives, the D3s, the D2s. It's NCA. Elevation comes with being part of an organization. Uh -huh. If I came in as the marketing director, Mm -hmm. And I did a really good job. Yeah. And they promote me to the CMO. Mm -hmm. I'm in the same company though. I got promoted to the CMO. If I started at the HBCU, let's say I was at D3. And I went from a D3 to a D2. Mm -hmm. From a D2 to the FCS. When you get to the FCS level, that's when things get weird. Because the FCS goes HBCU, FCS, Ivy League. So you got three sectors of the FCS. Could he have went from an FCS to FCS? Could he have went from Jackson to Texas State? Sure. But in your, your company, that's called moving laterals. Mm -hmm. So I got to go from the FCS to the FBS. Mm -hmm. so at your job, you want to move up. Yeah. Now, if the HBCUs were separate from the NCAA and he just left them high and dry and went and joined another group, like you just left Facebook and went and joined Google. Google. <laughs> okay. You tripping. <laughs> <laughs> but if I'm in Facebook and I just happen to move up to the C suite, I'm still with the company though. And if what I just did opened the doors for a lot of the people from my department to also get a look, because if I did well, then that obviously means there were other people around me who helped me. Mm -hmm. so they did well, too. So that means the door opens up for other people to move up, which then opens room for other entry level coaches to come on in, mm -hmm. which then creates a pipeline of people. We love Nick Saban's coaching tree. We love it. We love Bill Parcells' on coaching tree. Mm -hmm. We love the Belichick's coaching tree, but then Prime Foster built the tree. You can't, you can't plant the root, grow as a tree, bear fruit, and the fruit just dies where the tree is at. <laughs> Somebody from the something from the thing has to go somewhere else, either feed the people or, or you're planting again and create more trees. Yeah. But we wanted this one tree to just continuously produce fruit after fruit after fruit after fruit after fruit. At some point, the tree gonna stop producing. And it dies. You cut it. Mm. So we just want bro to just stay in it, in it. I mean it's one spot. 50 years. Do like uh, Coach Randall. Just, just like Eddie Robson. Be like 50 years. Oh, Lord. 50 years. 50 years. 50, you want my man to be there for 50 years so, so we can have the same argument that black people don't get a shot to move up. Mm. 50 years with no resources. 50 years Ooh. with no ele elevation 50 years of us just doing our thing this is just what we do this is tra tradition this is what we do well what we do in this new 
generation is elevate and bring people with us. Not let me hold this position and be the only big dog and y'all can never move, move, move up because I'm never going to move out this spot. That is old school. I'm in a position. I'm not. I'm in the position and then there's no secession plan at all. No, there's none. It's zero. The only pl- pl- plan is me. And when I die, then we start over again. Yeah, I'm dying with all the game. I'm dying with all the connections. Uh-uh. I'm not putting you on. Uh-uh. None of that. And that's kind of where the NIL and all that is at, is that we're telling these kids that they can get as much money as possible for as little amount of work as possible. And if you're not getting what you want, just leave. Oh, God. And then we're wondering, what's the effect later? Well... I'm going to get as much money as possible. If I can't get money here, I'm going to go to the next job. I'm going to get as much as I can from this group here. And if I can't, I'm going to get over here. When do you build fruit? When do you set roots? When do you actually establish something? Look at all your NFL guys. They all leave, leave, leave the league and start doing weird stuff, like becoming rappers. <laughs> you get rich, you get famous, and you go backwards. And you become a rapper. Oh, that sounds so bad when you say it out loud. And nobody wants to say it out loud. Bro, you became a rapper. You spent 20 years perfecting a craft that you got really good at, that you could have leveraged. To continue that. But instead, you rather say, you know what? I'm going to go do the thing that we were doing to get out of the thing. Although I already made it out the thing. We hustled mm-hmm. back was a lot. Yeah, there, lot. There, there, there is a lot of that. But, I, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the ones that are, that are starting the media production companies. The few and far between. I mean, it seems it seems like more than it is, but I mean. And, then, and, you, and you got some that's doing it right. Oh. And then you got some that's hustling backwards. <laughs> Let's have a conversation about what we went through, how we got out of it, and what's next. Great. Or let's get on here and talk about all the nonsense. Let's shed light on all the BS we did. I played high the whole time, dog. Who cares? I don't understand. I don't understand when they when when people do that though. Because yes, it's fine if that's what you did. That that was you. But there is a whole line of other people that might have been teetering between: Do I blow before this game, or do I not blow because I might get drug tested, whatever it might be? They would say, Ah, I saw him say it, so I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, I don't like that. I was I partied till four a.m. and made the practice. The next day, smell like alcohol, Johnny. Hmm. And it's tough for people like him to say that, although his story was a masterclass. Oh my goodness, that was that, that was phenomenal. Yeah, though. that was good. But you got kids who can't interpret that, and they'll say, "Well, he went to high school." Yeah. One of a different era. And what he did then will never be done again. Oh, never. But you can't say, well, Johnny was going to the club and partying and he still won the Heisman. He still got drafted. Well, dog, guarantee it's not going to happen like that again. Mm-mm. Phenoms happen once. But I can go on this all day. I like to always say, you know, I ain't no judgmental person. I just want people to understand that you have an opportunity to elevate then elevate. But we as a culture are so afraid to elevate that we will rather sabotage ourselves so that we can have a story about how we're on the grind on the come up. Mm. And I'll say it in a different way. 
if you literally say, I got it out the mud, you get more applause than somebody who said, you know what? My family put me in position. I used it. I took the baton. I kept going. Oh, you had it easy. Silver spoon. Trust fund, baby. That's not, mm -hmm. you ain't got no real grind. For sure. So I have to grind, struggle, beat my head against the wall for you to approve of my success. Mm. That's the hardest part for us to understand that a guy like Coach Prime can go from high school with no track record to a college uh, coaching job and in three years, power five. Oh, he only got that because he's here. Well, that means he did something before that, dummy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he kind of is a Hall of Famer. <laughs> and he did become a Hall of Fame because he was in Fort Myers. He had to work. He put the work in to become a Hall of Famer, which then he leveraged to fast track himself to success. And y'all mm -hmm. mad at that because he didn't do it the traditional way. Well, what's the traditional way? And then we go back to the school thing. What is traditional pathway? Go be a GA? Imagine Dion saying, I'm going to go be a GA. Sleep on the, on the floor. Really? Go be an assistant? Assistant to who? Yeah, that wouldn't have, that wouldn't have worked out. That would have been it, it would have been like the whole Jordan on the bus situation. Like Jordan bought the bus for the team. That would who you had, can't. Who could he have been an, an, an assistant? Anybody would have been intimidated. Everybody. Would have yeah, been. it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have worked they, out. They would have been asking all. him for advice on how they should run the program. Well, he's already head coaching because head coach only about six minutes. So him going to Jackson proved. For anybody, yo, if Dion thought that Jackson was a great spot, maybe I can think that Jackson is a good spot. Mm. Versus some no-name coach in the HBCU world who people don't even know because they ain't on the internet. Well, why would I want to aspire to be him if I don't know him? So everybody wants to be Nick Saban. Mm. Now you got people who want the high school guys. Everybody want to be like prime now. I want to be known. I want to be seen. I want to put my program on the map. I've seen more coaches on Twitter now showing their face and, <laughs> and like hearing their voice than I've ever seen. High school guys with camera crews. High school coaches doing podcasts. When, when was this a thing? Oh, I know. 2020. That's, mm -hmm. that's when it became a thing. Oh, wait, wait. Stay. So, so we're going we gonna to stay right there because you knew I wanted to get to the media part. You knew I wanted to get to the media part because you, you're talking about people getting out the mud. You're talking about the silver spoon. And then we, we, can, then we can go and talk about what, what Bucky has done. Bucky and Darius. Dar Darius is the is other young man's name with, with well-off media because one, one thing that, like, you know, traditionally – the only access we've been we've gotten in terms of college sports of the team is what we see on ESPN, Sports Center, Top Ten, all that good stuff. But now people can aspire to be like Coach Prime because of what they've done with the media. Talk about you got to break it down the way you broke it down to me when we talked the last time because you was like, Ch -ch -ch -ch. and I was like, wait, what? I didn't know that the way that the media is on. Dude, go ahead, talk about that, man. So Con contractually, if the school records the footage, mm -hmm. that's the school's footage. They control that. If you're recording a game and you're contracted with the conference, that's the conference's footage. Mm -hmm. But if I got my own footage, that's mine. I don't think Bucky knew this when he first did it. But simply just pulling out your phone and doing what every fan in the stand does. Mm. Pulling out your phone and doing what everybody who gets sideline passes do. Mm. The only thing that they didn't do was post it. You post it to your 16 followers. Bro put it on YouTube. And because of who you captured, it took off. Mm-hmm. And I think once he did that, it opened up a market that didn't even exist. Go look at the the top 20 YouTube channels that's about sports. All of them take well-off videos and commentate 
on their stuff. And that's how they built the chat channel up. Mm. They took the Coach Prime footage, put it on their stuff. So Bucky is recording this foot on this footage. Little no name got in the basement, stealing it. I'm stealing it. He taking it mm-hmm. and using their clips for their page. Mm. But you never saw people do that for a Florida State highlight, a Clemson highlight, and the LSU film. Why? Because the person who was recording it felt like they were out of reach. Bucky make everybody feel like we family, we family, we family dog. So you can borrow my clips. But who's behind the camera at the media team for the big schools? You don't know. Then COVID opened up the door where you have to get on video. Mm-hmm. Well, if my school is in the middle of nowhere, Boulder, and I'm not sure if I want to go see how it looks, but these people who give us first person view. Now I ain't gotta go see it. You show me how locker rooms look. You show me how the offices look. You show me what they're doing day to day. You show me when it's cold. You show me when it's hot. And then when I show up, it's even better. Mm. It's like, holy smoke, bro. Dang. So what Bucky did was said, hey, look, you don't have to go get for all the small schools, the HBCUs and the D2s. You ain't got to go get a big time media crew and buy an 18 dollar camera with the on with the rig and all of the the, the media trucks. You got an eleven hundred dollar cell phone with a camera that's amazing. Just show it. Because when the kids come on a on a on a visit, what are they actually doing? This. They go on and see like, oh, let me see what y'all carpet made out of. It's, they're looking like, man, this is nice. I, I can see myself here. And what is YouTube for? How do I X, Y, Z? Okay. How does Jackson State look? Put it up. How does boom, boom, boom. Mm. And if everybody's doing this, well, why not just smack them where they at? Yo, every week, something happened. Oh, snap. I didn't realize the practices be this lit every day. Mm-hmm. I didn't know this per- 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 person was, was on the team. Yo, I can't wait to see such and such in the game. He like a dog in pra- practice. Oh my, like now you building a storyline around people without a script. Mm, yeah, you're right. Bro is a wizard. And he just now getting going. Yeah, he, That's for the real. Crazy part. That's the crazy that's the crazy part. He just pulling up the, the camera and saying, hey, look, this is what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Boom, boom. And now everybody wants to do what they're doing. But here's the, the issue. The whole organization is, is, is not, it's like not, it's not on board. So you might have one person who's forward thinking and say, yeah, bro, we got to film this. You may have one coach or staffer that said, man, we need a camera all around here. Let's pump that down so we gotta focus on we gotta focus on the scouting report we gotta focus on the game the main things the main things oh my god yeah that's it (laughs) hey man look 10 minute main thing and I'll keep it though I'll keep the main thing but if you just walk walk up to me and say bro keep the main thing the main thing I'm looking at you like all right. so what's the main thing because what Chip Kelly said to be a head coach now you have to be a CEO. The CEO has vision, has has a mission. What's the mission of a football team? To win a championship. That's it. So what happens if you don't win a championship? Mission over. Mission fail. I'm transferred. Because mm. you sold me on a championship. Dang. That was the mission. You sold me on that. You sold me on that. The opening press conference, Bucky said, I'm going to make y'all the most famous people to walk this planet. He sold you on what he going to do. It takes me to be on on camera. camera. It takes my YouTube. It takes me getting footage. It takes me getting content. 
And then if the coaches say, the football stuff. But if everybody in unison is saying, okay, I got to get your content up, I'm going to make you famous, got the NIL stuff popping, we're going to get you a shot, we're going to get you seen, I have no reason to leave. Because you sold me. That's, that's retention. But if you selling me on, we're going we gonna, to we gonna win championships, and we don't win. <laughs> or, or, or you said you know champ on champ on championships we go zero and three. I know we ain't going to playoffs. Mm. So my mind already now I'm out. Of as soon as you know it, I'm out. So I already checked out week three. Dang. And the coaches are just coaching. The player development guy, our girl, is. I don't know. And student athlete development people are wondering, like, why is grade drop? So, what? How do you put all that together? So, what Bucky did, he showed you what school is about. Mm-hmm. Every day, it ain't cool. The cafeteria, if you, if you go look at the meals, it's, it's the same meals every other week. So, it ain't like the cafeteria is so much different here than it is over there but you hear a lot of athletes say I left because the cafeteria food was bad everybody's getting fed by Sodesto <laughs> your chef might be different but the the food is the food oh they don't have no the weight room well Colorado weight room ain't the best but ain't the worst mm-hmm. they don't have no indoor well Colorado indoor ain't the best but ain't the worst. So what you actually looking for? In any school that gonna sell you on our uniform, they don't believe in the program. If they sell you on the facilities, they don't believe in the program. If they sell you on a championship, they don't believe in your program because they don't know a lot about it. Those three things are irrelevant. Uniforms can get changed. Uniform, if, if I got a white version, a black version, and a Color rush. After about week five, we wore it already. Mm. Facilities, if I show up for two weeks straight, I saw it all already. Mm. Championships, if we only three, we ain't winning that. And don't sell me on the four years before it. Why is that? Because you're going to be, you ain't going to be here for four years. Oh, we're gonna get you here. Yeah, we're gonna get you to commit for your for four years because it's about the next forty years. That sounded great in nineteen seventy when pe- people went to one school. Mm. Now we're gonna take this thing like year by year. Look, the overall goal is four years, but look, in year one we doing this. Year two we doing this. Year three we doing this. That's why you have to have these silly kids that come on the thing and say, for the next three or four years, I'm committing to. No, they don't come on and say that. Well, that's the open line. Oh, my goodness. I made my decision decision for the next three or four years. Three or four years? Three or four years? (laughs) Bro, you might not even play your first year. Let alone your second. Oh, my goodness. Come out of out of high school but because that rhetoric has been said for so many years it's like that's the thing it's almost like the first and foremost I want to thank God it's like a traditional like saying right it was uh-huh. like alright man it's cool but media is America's number one power we tell everybody we're the best. We tell everybody we're the greatest. We tell everybody we're the richest. Until you go to Dubai and you see what what rich actually look like. Mm-hmm. Media and sports, we're the best. Because at one point, the best team was only the team that won a championship. Nick Saban just left because he's telling y'all there is no we're going to dominate because we win the championships. These kids don't care about that. So if you care about the championships, 
go be an OC. Go be an assistant guy because you can't be the head guy because they're going to ask you, what's the plan for me? And because these kids are so immature, they're only thinking about the money part. But somebody has to teach them, ask more about the money because if they throw a bag at you, I'm actually not going to shut you up. No, mm-hmm. hey, when you say you're going to develop me, what does that mean? What are you going to develop me in? We're going to make you the best QB in the nation. According to what metrics? Mm. I'm coming in. Him too. You're going to do us like the same the, the better plan. So you're going to do the same stuff and we, and we both going to be the best QB Q, 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 in the nation. How? Tell me how you're going to work on my, my mechanics. Tell me how you're going to help me build a brand. Tell me how you're going to get my family to be able to come watch my games. Tell me how you're going to help me move from Florida to Washington. What's the plan? Yeah, I committed, but I don't know how to move across on states. I don't know how to re- relocate. So we, when I built RPA, and now we have it called the Athlete Development Resource. We built that because there's so many holes. And mm-hmm. it has nothing to do with running and jumping. Mm-hmm. It's just too many holes. You sign a kid from the bottom of the map, Florida, and he's coming to play for you in Washington. Yeah, kudos to the school for getting an out-of-state kid. But the cultural d- difference. The time difference, the I gotta move from the bottom of the map to over here so there ain't no going home. Hmm. How do I make sure this kid is here and he is feeling like he made the right des- the decision? How do I reassure her that I have to give him a plan and it can't be no championship because if he don't play, let's say you know kids freshmen they show up and they might not grasp the playbook if they're on the bench. And you said, you're a big part of our future, man. We're going to win a championship because of people like you. And they come. And a guy transfers in. And you say, next year. Next year? Well, I'm leaving after this season. <laughs> then what? Now the kid goes to do the same thing all over again. Next school, he gets sold the same drink. So I, I can rant all the time, but you asked about Bucky and him, and what Bucky did is he's he found his way that it makes perfect sense. He's a fan. Mm. He's being a fan. I'm just being a fan. The way he talks about his dad and his brother, you would think they're not related. Yeah. <laughs> like the way he talks about, like, man, you, you, you junior. Like, yeah. the way he talks, he's professional. He's talking professionally. Mm-hmm. Dude got foresight. If you look at all the old videos, he's talking about what he wants to do and, and when he finally gets on and all these things. But he was a great the individual, one athlete, too. SMU. And he went to a prep school. Mm. And SM, SMU's academic rigor ain't easy. Man, and at that point, <clears throat> I understood what I wanted to do. He went to a prep school in Atlanta. I said, you know what? I want to do something like, like that. And then I said, dang, LC played some prep school. Mm. Mm. But I wasn't in tune with my school, and I don't know what's going on because we had a JV team. Mm. So when I'm hearing JV in college, I'm, I'm like, oh, it's dope. Harvard used to have a JV team. Uh-huh. So it's like, there's JV in college? And then Army, Navy, and Air Force all have prep teams. Mm. So I'm like, man, hold on, hold on. Time out. Okay. There's a whole lane out here that people don't know about. Then there's a club football league. Ohio State, Pittsburgh, uh, Dartmouth. Oh, I didn't know that. They play a full league. School colors, school logo, mascot, 
The whole nine. It's, it's, it's a four, go look it up. It's a four club league. That's like 15 teams. They travel, yeah. playoffs, awards, championships. So I ain't making up stuff. I'm just exposing the South to what's really happening mm. outside of our little Bible Belt. Wow. Man, okay. Okay. Just like you told me earlier, we probably are gonna have to do I, a part hey, two. Just, it's like you told me, but but before 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 you get out of here, uh, first first I want you to tell the people where they can find you, follow you, and I got two more questions: where they can find you, follow you, and connect with you, and everything yeah. like that. So everything, all my social media is Reggie Calhoun Jr. Um, website is um, athdev resource dot com. So it's athlete development resource, but it's athdev resource. Um, but if you want to hit me up on Instagram and Twitter, whatever, it's just my name. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So now uh, I want I want to ask you, uh, though, I like to do this segment called Winter Circle of the Week. And the reason I'd like to do it is just give you the opportunity to shine spotlight on somebody that you've seen, you know, put in the word grind. They don't have to be an athlete, but, you know, somebody you've seen put in the word grind and you just feel like, you know, there's somebody who hasn't who hasn't got their flowers just yet. Who would that person be for you? Ooh. So I like to always say that I, I can learn from anybody. And uh, shout out my guy, Ariel. Bro, built, I've watched him build his media brand from a high school kid to a young man. And the stuff that, that he's done, it inspires me. So that spotlight for him is, 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 is needed because he's the brains behind a lot of my stuff, but all my stuff, and a lot of people you see. A lot, mm. a lot of your friends in that Dallas are filmed by him. Mm. Yeah, also, go 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 ahead, th- throw out his Instagram as well. So, uh, what is your boy Instagram? It's <laughs> <laughs> what's your Instagram? E for Ariel. So E F O R E R Y L. E F O R E R Y L. E. Look, man, just type in Ariel Jefferson <laughs> on on Instagram. Yeah, I got He's you. The guy with the camera, and, you know. Got these little blue circle things. That's, For sure. That's him. Yeah. yeah, we'll put the, we'll put his Instagram down in the yeah, uh, in, in, the, in, in the show notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So now now we're, now we're at the. Uh, I, I should have asked you this before, but this the this or that segment. Just a couple of rapid fire questions. I just like to ask these just to to have a little bit of fun. You ready? Yep. All right. So in terms in terms of wings, right? Boneless or bone in? Boneless. Okay. That's, is that considered real? Is that considered real chicken? Don't, don't, don't start. Is that considered real chicken? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that's funny okay okay uh tackle football or flag football tackle. okay beaches or mountains beaches or mountains uh i'm gonna go with the mountains okay small gathering or a big party small gathering okay animated or live action movies live action and then just a bonus one who's your who's your favorite avenger Ooh. favorite avenger Iron Man. Why? One, because he's an entrepreneur and he stands toe to toe with people with power that he don't have, yet he looked at it like a leader. Family, hold up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You've been rocking. You've been enjoying the episode so far. I need you to do me a favor. Just hit that subscribe button just right down there. All right? Hit that subscribe button. Have you hit it yet? All right. Go ahead. Hit it. And we're going to get back to this episode. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. All right. Then we're going to round this thing out. And this is a two-part question. But it's one tip that you would want to leave for a student athlete. And what's one resource that you want to share with a student athlete? It could be a book, podcast, whatever. Yeah. But one tip and then one resource. Um, one tip is student oh. athlete. So everything you've done athletically applies to real life. Team mm-hmm. building, uh, grinding it out. Uh, hard work, focus, and commitment, all that plays a part in real life. Um, the resource outside of this podcast, I would say uh, a book called Who Not How. Mm. And I think that book changes your outlook on I can't get here because if you go get the who's, mm-hmm. you got to worry about trying to fit that. You got how to do it. And that Kill the learning curve. That's it, man. That's it. 
Mr. Reggie Calhoun Jr. Rather, we appreciate you coming coming through, blessing uh, the Beyond the Ball podcast stage. I'm Jonathan Jones. This is Beyond the Ball, where we help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. Till next time, peace. God bless.